Okay, people. There's the plate. It's plated. I decided not to double plate it. I wanted to show you, you know, the uh, single-sided plate. And so there's a single-sided plate with well, a few fasteners, as you can see. Well, some of them are screws in the middle, but they're bolted at the ends. Bolted at the ends and screws in the middle to keep the plate from buckling. That's basically the intent of that. Now let's go over here and I remove that bottom strap, the one I showed you with the theory to show you how it doesn't work. I removed it, the, uh, that guy, the strut we had in there. Now we have the floor joist is tight. Look at it. That's just, I'll let you look at it in multiple angles. That is tight. That's just old nothing. So there's the washer system. Just burned, I just burned some steel plate and burned holes in it. And you're like, hey, the edges are roughed and all that. Well, those edges act as a, as a, a bite. It bites into the wood. The rough edges. So I don't mind. See the rough edge there? I can dig in the wood to some degree as you clamp it. I like that. All I did, but I did grind where I get flat surface here on each one of the, each, each location of the nuts. Um, a flat surface. Now, I'll use this, the next one, I was just trying to show this just to a contractor to show them concept that how you can just not use, you know, you can just use a regular torch, you can use a bandsaw if you want it, anything to make the, the larger distribution plate, not just a washer though, even a piece of angle iron I threw in there for them to show them that anything that's going to make a bigger distribution plate, not just the washer, as I showed them up top, it just compresses in. It doesn't distribute the load good enough. It can punch through. So I found another smaller, thinner plate for them. And I said, well, you can stack it up a little bit. As long as we get the same uh, clamp force. And we, and we did. You know, you're not turning that. It's no vibration, so I'm not worried about it turning. But it was all about clamp force. It's just scrap metal. Just burn it, whatever was left. This is not scrap metal on this side. The, um, again, it's very tight. Coming back to this one now, this is going to be fun. I'll do a different part for you and a different version of it. A lot more how I would prefer it. We're going to you know, leave a little relief cut there. But this one, since you saw that one, how is the best way, the, how is the best way to handle this fracture? Though this fracture, she's intense. She goes way out to there, out to the wiring. What's the best way to handle this? So it's only a little bit of wood left, and a lot of it's in cantilever. A lot of it's being supported by the floor joist above, the uh, flooring above screwed down. So it's getting a, a strong back effect um, from it. Now, if it wasn't the floors there, this would just, just fracture down as you walk on it. So the floor is actually helping out, support this at this point, transitioning. Um, so how do we do this? I have the plate. I have multiple plates for you. So this, these plates, let me just out of the way. This is a, a blend of two plates. So the, 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 the holes match up, as you can see. It will go over the pipe. It still isn't long enough, all right? But the pole, holes match up. Once you make the clamp force on the other side with the wood, that will be the clamp, the other part of the plate using the wood. But remember that wood has a split in it. So you can see that the, the uh, you can't quite tell, can you? This wood has a split, a significant split in it. See it? Well, get a piece of cardboard. We'll go up there and we'll cardboard the top section. Let me see if I can give you a rough idea. There's some more steel with some with it on it. So the cardboard will 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 match the fracture. So it goes something like this. Hold on. So this is not exactly right, so we'll do that for that for now. But the this would be the cardboard matching the top. And as you can see, I have a, a hole here and a hole here. So this is tying the two together, the plate is. So that once you jack it up, this seam can't come apart because these two are bonded by this gusset plate, if you will. And then the same thing here. See? See, that's, that's, all the, that's all the intent is right there. All right. 
And, and you, you should, well, there's that one and that one. You might want to put another one here, another one here. Now it gets smaller down here, so this is this will matter where this hole goes. If it lines up here, then this hole is abandoned, and we move over a hole, and maybe here and here. All right, so you get the strapping, see? the strapping with the steel, like that. That closes that seam up. It can't. It uh, closes that opening, that opening up, and it can It will not. Uh, it will not come apart. Once you transition down, right down to zero. All right. There's probably nothing too much we can grab here, but we'll still. If I can put a hole there through a hole, we'll still we'll still add two more. And then of course, once you once you transition to the other side, you're going to now tighten up the wood from here. These two. Are connected also. See right here? That's a hole. Okay. Gotta move it to some wood behind it, perhaps. There you go. So now that's a lubricant. The uh, and so now you're going these holes won't will overlap these holes in this plate. Just like these overlap, those holes will overlap here and making it one continuous um, um, plate. And so it now ties the lumber to act as one continuous piece of lumber. So you saw the way that would go something like this. Oh, this is this is quarter inch plate, three sixteenths plate. All right. So they line up like that. And you see the gusset plate behind it is this plate behind it acts like a gusset plate for these two. There is a little slight transition right there where it transitions down, but. It's not to be uh, not to be of concern. This will be tightened up. So that's one that one long piece. It's in, it's long. It goes from the wire all the way over to the first pipe. It goes to the wire. It's up there, and the one in the back doesn't take much at all. It just has a small fracture. The one in the back here is a small fracture, but nevertheless, it will still get a, a uh, just a just a plate. Like this, the one behind it. So let's move this out of the way. This one will go in there. There's the two, the two gaps for the steel for the uh, piping, and then it will get just, just buttoned up pretty good. That's what it looks like. That's what it's not going to look like on the others, though. The others, I'm going to show a different method to the contractor, which is um, all thread and and cutting it. To your exact length you need, bigger washers, and you're, you're going to be good. You're going to get about 2,000 pounds of force, clamp force, out of each one of these um, three inch sections of all thread he's going to make up. Now, you can also use these, which are more expensive. It's not going to be, it's going to get more stretching, more tension, because you remember that all the tension in this one, the tension is going to take place here. We want that clamp force. We want that spring action, that, that tension force. This will get more tension out of um, this uh, all thread than we would out of this. They both um, come up. This is class 8. And there we go. So I'd like to show it to you, the values of this on a clamp. One of my... Uh, um, my uh, Wilhelm, uh, Wilhelm, Wilhelm. Uh, it's a clamp. It's a clamp force tool that I can actually literally put these in there and crank it to failure, and then I get a value that I can work with. I've done these already. I'm just going to be safe with saying two thousand for you. It's greater than that, but I'm going to only give you two thousand on that three inch um, um, effect with the two nuts on it. And have a nut on each end. One will be the anchor. One will be a live load, and one will be the dead load. The, the dead anchor. Dead end. All right, take care. Hopefully this is fun for you. Again, there's your plate for the back one. There's your double plate for the one that's got super split. And you saw that when I went up there, I showed you that there was no fracture anymore, no cracking. And, yeah, you don't have to be so crazy about it. These screws are actually on an angle because it gives you more clamp force than if I just go straight through. And it comes out through the other side. But that get more clamp force, even though they're on an angle, that head pulls that plate in. 
even on an angle. The head's not shearing off or anything else. It's just a point load on that plate, which I'm happy with. Um, I get more torque out of it. So if I go straight in, which I've sampled, I've gone before, I've gone straight through, I don't get as much grab or, or uh, stress tension than I do if I run the screw on an angle. It gives me, giving again, the screw different, being different. With that said, I do have hmm, these that I was going to probably um, transition to a uh, yeah, lag screw, although um, a lag screw with a bigger head and a bigger washer for them in the middle, in the middle zone here. Or I could care less and he can cut a bunch of these up. And you just cut them on an angle when you cut and that way you don't have to worry about chasing threads. Take care. Love you. Bye. Thanks for the cat support. The cat shout out.